Hello and welcome back. So at this point, uh, we have this thing working out just fine, but this is too, too complex. So let's simplify things a little bit by going and putting them in the user class now. That way we only access things from the user class. So let's create a user class here for it. First, so class, not that class. So I'll do that. Okay, so I can add a uh, to access the user's table. Uh -huh. Okay, so the class name is user to match the file name. And then it doesn't extend another class, sadly. Let's leave that out. Okay. And then we have a constructor here let's leave it be uh, for now who knows we may need it but let's create another function here so inside the user class we want a few things to be happening for example we want to be able to create a user so i'm just going to write public function create like so mm -hmm. But then we need a protected function that will decide what action we do. Now, let's let's put protected here because we'll only be using from. Actually, no, we have to make it public, static, function, action. So this action is equal to the table function in here that does all the preparations this table function right there. So here, this is just for us to create an instance and then we can run an actual function after that. So let's create a protected uh, variable here called instance as usual. Actually, it should be, uh, should it be protected? Yes, I guess so. Mm -hmm. instance like so mm -hmm. what else do we need mm. the fact that we are already in this class we know what table we are reading from which is the users table so no need to put table and i think for now we can make do with just the instance so only thing we need to do here is create an instance in the action for now. So let's return an instance first of all. Return self instance like that. Okay, now that we've returned that, let's do some actual checking if an instance actually exists. If not, we create it so that we have something actual to return. So if not instance, then we create an instance and how do we do that we're going to say self instance is equal to new self all right then so we create a new self and then we return the new self but we only create it if there is none that exists Okay, so once we are done with that, now I can do the create, but we'll do the create for when we are signing up. For now, what I want is just to be able to return a user. So I'm going to say public function, uh, or like that, okay. Get all like that, more descriptive. And then let me create another public function. So I'm just going to copy this. Let's say public function, change it from get or to get by ID, like so. And of course, we will need to supply an ID. What other way would we want to get a user by? We may want to get a user using the email. So we'll say get by email. And then here I will supply the email. Okay, so let's come back to the user table and monitor it for a second here. So this password, this gender, yeah, I think that's pretty much what we will need to be doing. 
Now, also in the database class, we may need to add, instead of, because there are sometimes you want to run very complex, um, very complex uh, queries that may not fit in this criteria of a simple where clause, and maybe you want to add joins and all that stuff. So in that kind of a case, we are going to use a function called query like this. So I'm just going to say public uh, function And then I'm just going to say query, yeah. Mm, or is this query? Yes. So this one is just going to run whatever query we supply in there. It's just going to run it as is. And then we'll also obviously need some values in here for prepared statements is equal to array like so. Okay, so this is in anticipation for the future. And in the same fashion, we can do that for the user class. But for now, uh, this is enough. So let's see how we can actually get all using the user class instead. So now that we have an instance and we've returned that instance, we just need some data to return here. So when we say get all, we just want to get everything. So I will go to the index thing and grab this one right here cut it out and come to the user class and paste it here like so and then i will get the other one that we used an id and cut that out and paste it in get by id so the beauty of using the static method like this i don't have to instantiate and i can run the db class from anywhere so all I need here is this data table. I know the table will always be users. And then I will say, select yes, oh, and that's it then. So instead of even assigning this to anything, I can just say return to return any result that is there. And then this one get by ID, same thing. I'm just going to say return, select, where and then id is equal to but then because i don't know what id will be selected i will have to put the variable there instead and that's it so now uh, we have we can get users as we want so if i go to my index page now instead of running the database directly all i need to do now to get my data is to use the user class so it acts as an intermediate between me and the database so I'm going to say user capital U because that's the name of the class. And then here I will say action so that I can return the, uh, the instance, okay? So that I don't have to say user is equal to new user, blah, blah, blah. So here user action, and then I'll say get all like that. And just like that, I've got all the Ooh, access to undeclared static property user instance. Where is that? User class online 17. Where are we? Hmm. Well, didn't we forget to put a static? Hmm. Okay, so add the static there and do the refresh. Too few arguments were given to the function construct. Oh, look at that, my bad. So remove this argument here, unfortunately. <laughs> in the constructor. Refresh, and there we go. So we are in business. Mm -hmm. We are in business. So we have all the records returned. But then if I go back to my index and I don't want to return everything, I just want to get by ID. So I'll say get by ID and then let me give my ID there as two, for example. And if I now refresh, I have that record. And if I change that to one and refresh, now I have a different record. Very, very nice. So in the next one, we're going to look at how to do the update version 
of the database so that we can actually update our user if we want to do so. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.